Good morning, everybody. This is Tony Jose. Today, I'm speaking to David Reedy, who is the founder of UK. David, thank you for coming all the way from the Blue, Blue Mountains. Mountains. Yes. Was yes. it a, was it a good drive? It well, well there's hardly any traffic on the road, so yes, <laughs> it's, it's it's been very good. And, and with social distancing, how are we going to manage that here? Well, magic of television, um, we can sort of just move close to each other virtually. Woo! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yep. Thank you, David. No and problem. David, are you happy for me to get into the questions? Yeah, sure. So good on you, David. Um, can you please share about yourself, David, the place you were born, um, your education, the things that you enjoy doing, and one thing that the public might not know about you? Okay. Um, I was born in Sydney, and I've lived sort of in Sydney all my life. Um, I've only ever actually lived in three houses. Okay. <laughs> all up. I have no intention of moving. I have too much junk to ever move. Um, I went to school uh, on the north side of the harbour mm -hmm. in Sydney. Uh, from there to Sydney University, I did astrophysics. Wow. Um, found when I was doing astrophysics that I liked teaching more than, well, not more than the physics, but I got more out of the teaching. Okay. Uh, because back in the old days, when you were in fourth year at the university, you got an office and a job as well, even though you were still a student. So I was teaching first year students. Wow, that sounds good. Um, I found I really liked that. So I took a year off and then went back and did a teaching degree. Yeah and pretty much have been teaching until I retired wow. at the end of 2019. Um, I've taught physics, science and software design, basically, um, and a bit of everything else. Um, things, something a member of the public wouldn't know. Well, I mean, I did used to have a knitting podcast, but because knitting members of the public podcast. would know about that okay. because it was, <laughs> it was quite successful actually. But that was well before you used to be able to make a lot of money. Okay. In, uh, and that, that ran for six years. Knitting um, podcast. About yeah. knitting, yeah. It's interesting. So that'll, it was, uh, that'll raise a few eyebrows. Well, it was good. It was. Um, it, it came about because I, start, I used to drive to work, but once I moved to the Blue Mountains, I was okay. getting the train to and from work. Okay. And if I didn't have anything to program, my other hobby was painting miniature figures, and you can't do that on the train. Okay. So I learnt to knit back when I was in primary school. So I took that back up and found it, it's, it's really good on the train. Good on you, and, uh, good on you. I, yeah. can, I can see you knitting away when you're coming. Not very quickly though. <laughs> it, it took me a year and a half to do the first jumper. It won a prize at the Easter show, so that was nice, but good on you. it yeah. did take <laughs> a year and a half to knit. I, like, I, I never knit for babies because by the time I finished their toddlers. <laughs> <laughs> That's, That's a good one, David. Mm. Um, and David, moving on to the next question, um, can you please share about your work experience? You touched on it on the first question, yeah. uh, but can you share a bit more about your work experience prior to you starting uh, UK? So basically, I was um, I started off just as a, a general science and physics teacher. Um, took a little bit of a break and ran a scuba diving shop for two years. Okay, went, found that I missed the teaching more than anything else, so I went back to teaching. Um, for the next 20 years at the same school. Okay. And again, teaching, well, I was, to begin with the only, I was the computing department for teaching. Okay. Um, and that moved on to being um, the head of the computing department for teaching and also still teaching science and, and physics at the same time. Okay. Um, and basically towards the end, computing has moved on to STEM. Okay. Which also then meant that I had to be able to teach cooking, mm -hmm. which I'm, <laughs> I, you know, I, I can not poison myself, but yeah. I would hardly call myself a gourmet chef. Um, and basically, I, I became ill, and it was hard to to work and be in the classroom for five days a week. Okay. So, work was very good. I worked three days a week for a year, okay. and then basically offered me a redundancy package, and I was able to move on. At the same time, I had always been developing computer software. Okay. Um, I'd done a timetabling system for the school uh, for taking the role okay. uh, off the school timetable. Um, and we came up with the idea. Originally, we were looking at, uh, at software for daycare. Mm -hmm. And then my, the other founder, my, my nephew-in-law, um, said, well, there's nothing in aged care. And he was right. There was nothing in aged care. So okay. we pivoted the... 
I mean, the, the, the daycare stuff is only just getting started. Okay. And so we've got age care. But yeah, and what's more, we, we can make a difference here. Yeah. Um, because there's, well, as you know, there's, there's been a lot of problems with age care. Mm -hmm. And I think that what we're offering can make a real difference to to people's experience, to, to the family experience in, in aged care. So we, we've, that's why we stamp, you know, trademarked the name, set up the company, and we've been developing ever since. Good on you, David. Thanks. Thank you for sharing that. And and moving on to the next one, um, can you please tell me when you started UK, uh, what was that inspiration for you? I think you touched on that. Yeah. In the second um, as well. Yeah. It was Todd, my, my co-founder, as I said, he's, he's married to my niece, um, and his grandmother had had to go into care. Okay. But his grandfather didn't. Now, they'd been married for nearly 60 years. Mm -hmm. So they had seen each other every day for 60 years. And okay. now um, yeah, his grandmother is two suburbs away. His grandfather, who can't get there every day, mm -hmm. is missing his wife because he's got no information. I mean, she, is, she has since died. But one thing George said was it would have been easier if she had died because then God would be looking after her, not okay. strangers two suburbs away. Mm. Um, and it was this this just lack of, it didn't have to be detailed communication. It was she'd had her breakfast mm. or, you know, that um, she's been sitting in the garden enjoying the sunshine. Those little bits of information were the things that he was missing more than uh, doctor's reports he got. I mean, they always made sure that those health-related things did come through, but it was the 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 day-to-day -day details that aren't important in themselves but are really important for keeping that connection. But so that was what got us going. Um, and having spoken to other people, they're saying exactly the same thing, that the thing they're missing is not the big things. They get the big things. They don't get the little things. Interesting, um, yeah. interesting. So the daily living updates. And yeah, I mean, it, it's it's difficult to put a loved one into care to begin with. There's there's always feelings of guilt, okay. when you, even though it may well be the very best thing for that person because they're getting higher quality care, their nutrition's being better looked after. It yeah. really is possibly very good for that person. Mm -hmm. it doesn't make it any easier to, to go ahead and do it. So, yeah, That's so true. a lot of support from the people that we hope this will help which is Thank really you. the families of the of the people who are in care. Thank you, David. Thank you mm. for sharing that. It's very encouraging. Um, and, and moving on to the next one, David. Mm. So I believe you touched on this, you know, uh, in your answer as well. Um, so who are your target customers? And, it, and uh, how would this application benefit them? Okay, th this is the problem we had. That, um, the people that use our product will not be the people who buy our product. Okay. Um, and that, in fact, was the, is like we, we show this to families, they love the idea. We show it to nurses and to managers and aged care facilities, they love the idea. Okay. None of those people are our customers. Right. Um, the customers are the people spending the money in the aged care facilities and they're not in the aged care facilities and they try not to go there very often. And we've been told time and time again that it's bottom line. It's, you know, if we are sell it to these people, they need to see either how they're going to make more money or save more money or, yeah, the, the return on investment has to be monetary almost, as okay. opposed, whereas we started off by designing a product that really the return on investment is the good feelings and the, the peace of mind and everything. Um, so our real customers are the people in aged care that make the buying decisions, the ones that will say that, we're, we're going to use this brand of thing or we're going to spend this much on this. Those are the people we have to talk yeah. to. Yeah. Um, so there are customers, but they're not our users. Okay. And that's where that's where the business is at the moment. The users are happy, or we think the users are happy. <laughs> um, we've got to convince some of the, the buyers. The management. That, that this is a, a this really the benefits are, are going to work away. I mean, it's, it's not free. I mean, it can't be. We've got... Um, quite detailed because of um, privacy requirements and everything. We're using the same back end that the federal government is using for the COVID okay. application. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, I think we're doing it slightly better okay. because we have our keys, whereas the government has the keys with Amazon. Okay. But Amazon will let you have your own keys. We're using the same infrastructure. Right. So there are infrastructure costs, so we can't make it free. Um, 
but it's not it's not ridiculously expensive. Well, we don't think it's ridiculously okay. expensive. But okay. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be quite upfront. We need to make enough money to make sure we stay in business. Right. I mean, we we set the company up not to set it and sell it. Mm -hmm. Um, we haven't taken any venture capital money. It's, yeah. it's all been self-funded so far. And we want to bootstrap it from here. We've got two people who are interested in investing, Which is but long-term investing, not yeah. sure. I, I want to get my money out straight away. I mean, we, we're looking in terms of becoming a family company. You know, this is the, the thing that the family can, can do go, Thank you. You know, going on. Thank you, David. Thanks for sharing that. Um, very, very interesting and encouraging uh, at the same time. Um, so moving on to the next one, can you please share about the progress you have made in building UK till date? And mm -hmm. um, how has the current COVID-19 uh, pandemic affected your plans? It would have been very nice if we had finished six months earlier. Okay. Because this is perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, th this is, the, the product keeps families in contact with people in care without physically having to go there, which would have been right. absolutely perfect. Uh, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, I always say that software is never finished, it's just mm -hmm. released. And we're right. at that stage, we have a, a product that works. Mm -hmm. It probably has rough edges that need to be smoothed out. And the nice part about being the developer is that if I see something that I think is a rough edge, I can very quick turn around. Like yeah. um, I decided the other day that I didn't like the color scheme we were using on, on the message table. Yeah. So two hours later, we were using a di completely different system yeah. on the on the message and that was it's more than just a new color it's a whole i read the back end so we can now have whatever you say could we have this in purple i'll go yeah and you can have it in purple good um so we we have a working product mm -hmm. since we started looking at aged care residential um people have said oh, what about in home care okay we the back end has been designed to do that we haven't started the front end so that's where we are in development we, we're going to go with residential to begin with, but as soon as we start rolling that out, we'll get to work on the in-home care version as well. Um, Thank you. Thank so, you. and as I said, it, it's never really finished. We'll always be, be tweaking it here, and, it, and, and tweaking it. And, yeah. and if someone comes to us and says, we've got the special case, um, and we look at it and we go, well, let's say to other people, so we'll- Customize you know, it for or even just generalise that this is an idea we didn't think of. You give us the idea, we'll put it in the software and everyone can benefit. Thank you. Thank yeah. you, David. Thank you, David. Um, so moving on to the next question, um, and, and I think I say this every time uh, with my interview with David, is that mm. he actually goes ahead and answers uh, <laughs> in <laughs> advance. Uh, but because of, uh, you know questions are prepared, yeah. I think it's also good to um, ask them. So moving forward, um, what are your plans for your business in the short to medium term? Short term is to get it into a site where we can get feedback. Okay. Um, and of course we'll do that for free. Yeah. We'd, we'd like a site where we can go in, preferably somewhere close to where I live, mm -hmm. um, because I'll be the one that, that needs to interface a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that we can get it into the hands of people that will be using it and they can tell us what we did wrong. Mm -hmm. um, it's, I know that aged care workers are busy. So, for example, um, quite often they only have one hand free. Uh, they've got something in their other hand. They, they might be helping a patient with their other hand. So the entire interface has been designed to be able to work with one thumb. Okay. Um, we call it policialization. Mm -hmm. I mean, making, it, word. <laughs> making it thumbable. Okay. Well, it's Latin. Polique is Latin okay. for thumb. I did six okay. years of Latin at school. Um, so the, these are the ideas we've had that okay. it needs to be very easy to use. It's got to mm -hmm. be, at least for most functions, one thumbable, right. just so that, uh, that a user can, can really get in there and, and get things done and get things done very quickly mm -hmm. because aged care workers do not have a lot of time for individual reactions. So we can... We can do a meal report in under 10 seconds. Okay. And I can get down to five, but then I, I designed it. So I'm a bit faster. But we tell people that um, they can do a meal report. And that, that in, that's from start to it's gone to the family. Okay. Um, for a, for, yeah, so um, we, but I'm not sure we've got it right. Mm -hmm. And until it really is, you know, up against the coalface. So right. that's our next step is 
short term is to get it into somewhere right. um, and get some real world feedback. Yeah. And, and then real world feedback from a family. Right. So the, to begin with, it can just be within a facility, but then we can switch it over and the, the reports can start going to real people as right. well. Right. And then medium term is, is then to then grow the business, which we need to do carefully. Mm-hmm. Um, the the back end, the, the stuff we're doing with Amazon, that can scale to, well, Netflix runs on Amazon. I don't think we'll be as big as Netflix. <laughs> but so we're not worried, I'm not worried about that end of it. If suddenly we had a tripling or even a tenfold increase, um, Amazon can cover that in 15 minutes. Wow. Okay. So that's not the problem. The problem would be that I'm the technical support. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there's, there's only one of me at the moment. Yeah. So we our medium term is to grow at a rate at which we can expand. Because as I said, we're self-funding. Yes. So it stays within the income. So, yeah, it's that balance between we need to grow fast enough for the business to grow but not so fast that we start not being able to offer the service at the level that we want to offer the service. So kind of like organic, um, organically grow into the market. Yeah, well, yeah. basically, we I, I don't want to go into one of the large aged care providers and say, yeah, that's fine, we've got 30,000 beds, yeah. and some of them do. Yeah. Um, we couldn't handle that, mm-hmm. um, not without, you know, unless they partnered, um, we, we wouldn't be able to. So, yeah, so the medium term is this, we'd like to grow sustainably yeah um thank yeah. you thank you david so moving on to the next one david mm. um, if you look back to the time from when you decided to start um, your journey with uk uh, in hindsight what would you have done differently and why probably got a marketing partner okay um the one thing i'm not good at mm-hmm. or well it's probably lots of things i'm not good at <laughs> but in, in terms of the yeah. business yeah. I, I'm not good at and I don't enjoy the marketing side of things. Okay. If you come to me and say, tell me about your product and talk to you for hours about it. That's true. But if you want me to cold call somebody and sell them on it, no, that, that is not something I want to do. Um, my co-founder mm-hmm. um, runs a business. Uh, he's second in charge for a very large plumbing business. Okay. And his, that's what he does for the plumbing business. But... People need need plumbers. Right. I mean, at the moment, if someone's toilet backs up, they need a plumber. That's true. <laughs> right? I mean, we can't. Yeah, <laughs> that's um, that that's very different to you know. Would you like your bathroom remodeled, sort of that's thing, true. which is a more discretionary. Well, so he's he's doing a good job, but really, we need someone who who could specialize. And I think it might have been an idea at the beginning to actually get a partner. To, because we, we can't afford to pay mm-hmm. the hundreds of thousands of dollars a whole marketing campaign would cost. But if we could get market, if we had a marketing person who was one of the founders, right? Then um, that would be their job, mm-hmm. and I would I I wouldn't have to concern myself with it because at the moment I still do, I end up doing a lot of the marketing mm-hmm. just because I know the product better than everybody else. Yes, but um, yes, so yeah, that that would be it. Would be to get. Um, Thank you. Try and partner with the marketing, with marketing from the beginning. Thank you, thank you, David. And and David, um, moving on to the last question. Mm. So, what are the life and business lessons you would like to share with someone who is planning or thinking of starting their uh, entrepreneurial journey in Australia, yep. especially in the sector uh, that you are in with UK? Okay, so it depends on what your end goal is. Mm-hmm. Um, if you want to do a build and sell that appears, I remember I haven't done this, but from going to, to various things, that appears to be much easier. Right. That there's lots of opportunities to pitch an idea to venture capital mm-hmm. so that you can, I mean, whether or not you're successful or not is a different thing, yeah. but there are there are lots and lots of opportunities to get out there and, and do that. Mm-hmm. Um, there are a lot fewer opportunities if you want to bootstrap it yourself, although it worked for Atlassian. Yes. And, yeah, that, they're... They're now billionaires. I yeah. don't need to make that much sort of that sort of money, but um, yeah, we we want. Well, I mean, uh, people say lifestyle business, and they mean not serious, but we really do want. We want a sustainable business that we can see through, that we can build slowly, and give value back. Um, so, if you're starting at know where you want to be, 
Mm -hmm. I, uh, I mean, I, I go to the pitch nights and things, not with the intention of pitching, but just to see and hear how other people do it sort of right. thing. So certainly there, there are lots and lots of opportunities to go along. We were lucky enough to get into the Sydney University mm -hmm. Genesis Startup okay. thing, which fit that fitted us much better because they put a lot of emphasis on management techniques mm -hmm. and networking and not so much on how to get money out of venture capitalists. Right. So that was nice. So number one, know where you're going mm -hmm. and be happy with where you're going. Number two, um, working for yourself is really nice. You can pick which 14 hours of each day you want to work. <laughs> that's, that, that's it. I mean, it's yeah. going to be, yeah. you, you end up doing, even if you're the specialist, you still end up doing everything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, in a small business, how do you tell who the owner is? They're the one cleaning the toilets. Probably. <laughs> because, well, you know, you can't ask the staff to do stuff you won't do yourself. That's you true. can in a big business, That's but you can't in a little business. Yes. So as the, as the you know, if you're founding a, a little business, you really do have to be prepared to do absolutely everything. Yeah. yeah. Even the, the, in my case, the marketing, which I don't like. Um, I still do it. It has, it has to get done. It's nice to have Todd to, to help. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, so just be prepared to do everything, even the things you don't like. And, and basically you have to like what you're doing. I mean, I, I look at this and think if we can get this into, into aged care facilities, that is going to be better mm -hmm. for the people in the facilities and it's going to be better for their families. That's true. Um, I think one of the problems historically with aged care was it was closed. There was no sunlight getting in. And if no sunlight gets in, they can get away. And we have seen the Royal Commission reveal that some places were getting away with, like if you knew about it, that they would never have got away with it. Well, that's where our software we think may help, that it makes it very hard, we hope, to hide. Mm -hmm. If you have a child in daycare now, you, you get daily photographs and most people wouldn't put a child into daycare mm -hmm. if they weren't getting. The, we, 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 yeah, we want the same thing in aged care. It doesn't be our product. But we wanted that you wouldn't be putting your loved ones into aged care unless that facility was saying, and we will send you um, daily updates with photos or, and, or audio or whatever what? about how they're getting on just with the little things. So mm -hmm. The equivalent of, of finger painting in in uh, preschool, mm -hmm. yeah, is I don't know. Here, here's the trip we did to the local public library. You know, is everybody getting on and off the bus or something? That sort of thing, just so that peace of mind, okay. basically. And we would like that to become the norm in, in aged care. care. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, um, David. No, Truly no appreciate uh, you sharing your story. Thanks. And, Thanks uh, for the opportunity. And, and we uh, or I wish you the very best with thank UK. You. Thanks. and hope that UK would be introduced into the HK facilities and you know starting off with uh, HK facilities in the Blue Mountains and then spread out to the rest of uh, New South Wales and hopefully Australia uh, and the world, to, and, the world. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and have a real positive impact on the lives of uh, you know the elderly in those facilities so thank you uh, David once again thank and, you uh, wish you the very best thanks a lot